so another thing to note from the NFL is that 59 players have tested positive throughout the offseason so far. And a lot of NFL teams have been thinking about the possibility of keeping a quote unquote quarantine quarterback, which again would just be some type of quarterback that they would keep obviously under quarantine that would not be going out into the public. And again, if you want to give a little bit more details exactly, because I wasn't even too sure on how this would work. Yeah. So the 59 positives were how many are known to have contracted the off season. That yeah. doesn't include players who haven't disclosed it due to mm-hmm. HIPAA privacy or just never got tested. Right. So the number is actually probably much higher than that who have already contracted COVID. Mm-hmm. At some point, we'll get the results of the initial round of testing, possibly in the next few days. So it'll be very fascinating to see what that number is. And again, I've said this is if the goal is for the season to go smoothly with minimal disruption, the more players that test positive early, the more likely the season will go smoothly, Mm -hmm. assuming that some degree of immunity is developed, which helps decrease the likelihood of positive tests in the future. Yeah. So let's just hope that most players actually already had it, contracted it in the off season somehow, and have already gotten better and hopefully have some type of immunity built up for it. Right. Absolutely. Now, as far as keeping a quarantine quarterback, I really love thinking about the strategic issues when it comes to dealing with any kind of new rules or a new pandemic like COVID. Mm -hmm. I've seen multiple teams already publicly announced that they're considering keeping a quarantine quarterback. It seems like that might be a good idea Mm -hmm. because you don't want your entire quarterback room to be wiped out. Exactly. And now you're looking at a fourth or fifth string quarterback who you're trying to pull off the couch. (laughs) Now in a typical year, I like the idea of only keeping two quarterbacks on the roster because after the second quarterback, your season sort of screwed anyway. Exactly. But this year is a different year where you might want to keep a third quarterback Right now, the Lions only have two two legitimate quarterbacks on the roster, Stafford and Chase Daniel. Mm-hmm. The next guy is David Blau. <laughs> so we're not in good shape if David Blau has to <laughs> come in and play for us. So maybe we want to keep Chase Daniel in quarantine <laughs> and lock him up in a padded cell to, just in case Stafford goes down for a couple of weeks. I don't know. Yeah, that's honestly a really good idea, considering we're paying Chase Daniel that much money. So if we had both Stafford and Chase Daniels go down, that'd be, like you said, we're just at a lot of the season doesn't even matter at that point. So maybe they should consider putting Chase Daniels under some type of quarantine and maybe bringing in some other quarterbacks this during training camp, maybe to work them out and see if they can get another quarterback on the team. Yeah, that's a really good idea. We saw the Lions bring in a whole boatload of quarterbacks last year during training camp, just shuffle them in and out to try to find one that they liked. Yeah. That might be a really good idea this year to try to get a legitimate third or fourth quarterback. Uh, even if you don't keep them on their roster, if they stay unsigned during the season, you could potentially bring them back during the season. Mm-hmm. They'll have some knowledge of the offense. They'll have some knowledge with the system and the team. Exactly. And they might be able to play – at a moment's notice, like in a day, if mm-hmm. necessary. And that's something we should discuss coming up is the frequency of the testing program and how it might affect game day. Yeah, for sure. And one other note with the practice squad um, being increased as well, so they could have maybe one may or maybe even two quarterbacks just on the practice squad, like you said, just to have them that know the system. And that's another thing we can bring up right now as we move into that the practice squad, have they've kind of changed the rules now that there's going to be no more waivers. They can literally just pull them up and pull them down, kind of like the MLB. And I believe the NBA is like that. Again, I'm not 100% sure, but I think from the G League up to the NBA, I think they can just move them in like a day or two, and then they can be playing within, again, like maybe two to three days. So now that's with practice squad players. They're going to be able to just pull them up within a day's notice. So that could be a huge benefit. Like I said, maybe keeping two quarterbacks on the practice squad. Would you do have your opinions on that rule change? Yeah, I think it's a good rule change. Practice squads are completely different this year than the yeah. previous years. They almost should give it a different name because it's <laughs> so different. Mm-hmm. Uh, these guys are basically part of the team. In the past, if you brought a guy up to the team, you had to keep him on the active roster for at least three weeks. And if you dropped him back to the practice squad, they, were, they had to clear waivers. Right now, players won't need to clear waivers when mm-hmm. they go up and down from the practice squad. 
Exactly. So practice squads in the past were used as a developmental program because these guys, these guys rarely saw game action, Mm. but this year it's something different. These guys are backups and I think you want guys who are ready to play. Yeah. So guys who are ready to play at a moment's notice are much more valuable to keep on the practice squad than say some undrafted rookie or fringe player who doesn't have any NFL experience. Exactly. Another thing that can change about practice squads is you want positional diversification. You want to have backups available at each position. In the past, say you had a bunch of really promising wide receivers, you might keep four or five wide receivers on the practice squad because they're the best guys. Yeah. But this year, I don't think you want to do that. I think you want to spread out the position so you have backups available in case a bunch of players go down during the regular season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's especially with what happened last year. We had almost half the team on IR by the end of the season. Like you said, those practice squad players are pretty much just backups at this point. So when again, it kind of is a sort of bit of developmental thing because those are people that we kind of cycle through. You sign and cut people from the practice squad so often. So I kind of think it is just I'm using it as a base. But again, just having people there that can know the system, know the knowledge, and know the team and be able to work with the other players and everything like that too, it's a huge benefit. Yeah, that's a good point about cycling guys around the practice squad is maybe strategically you sort of want to do that. That way you get a whole bunch of players that have some familiarity with your scheme. So you, in effect, have a practice squad that's actually bigger than 16. (laughs) Like every other week you're cycling five to seven guys back and forth. Right. You could have a total of maybe 50 guys out there that are unsigned that know how to play. Right. Yeah, that, that's an interesting strategic idea. Yeah. Now, when we see which players get picked for the practice squad, guys who have the ability to play multiple positions are going to be favored here. Yeah. So, for example, an offensive lineman that can play guard, tackle, and center is going to have a lot more valuable than the guy who can only play offensive tackle. Yeah. So we might see guys that are multiple in their positions and can back up multiple positions on the team. Yeah, exactly. And we all know Matt Patricia loves that style. Just anyone, any player that can be versatile and play multiple positions is huge. It's a huge benefit for Matt Patricia. I know that's something he loves in his players. So, Yeah, you're right. So this might give us a little bit of leg up because we are already in that mental mindset that we want guys that are multiple. Exactly. 